Dear friends, our faith is rooted in a divine promise of salvation, which comes through the Lord Jesus. But this promise needs action on our part too. We cannot be passive, we cannot be bystanders, and simply hope to be saved. We must embrace Christ in our hearts. We must give him a resounding yes. We must give him our very own fiat, like the yes of our Blessed Lady. This is why turning to Mary helps us to draw closer to Christ. It is through praying for Mary's intercession and praying the rosary that we can fulfill our part in God's promise. Mary, our mother, is a model for us about how to be a true follower of Christ. She is the perfect disciple. And it is in perfect obedience to God that Mary said, I am the servant of the Lord. Yes, let everything you have promised be done to me. This was an active and resounding yes. It changed not only her life, but the lives of all of us. Is this the way you live your faith? Is this the way I live my faith? Are we following the example of Mary in surrender to God, in obedience to his will? What does it mean to surrender to God, to his will? Sometimes people think this too is a passive action. But letting something be and letting something go is not the same thing. It's about making room in our hearts for God to act freely in us. It's about turning to Christ with our petitions and letting his will be done. It means trusting in God as our Father, just as Mary trusted in God. At the wedding at the Cana in Galilee, she told us to trust whatever the Lord said. Mary saw people in need. She saw people who could not overcome the issue they faced. They ran out of wine. Great embarrassment. They couldn't be helped without her saviour. So she, we could say, interceded for them. She made a petition on their behalf and it led to a miracle. When Christ responded by saying, woman, what does this have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. Mary's response was not one of dejection or doubt, but of utter and complete obedience and trust to the will of God. Do whatever he tells you. Those were the words of Mary at Cana in Galilee. These simple but powerful words from our Blessed Lady point us to the mystery of her son, the Lord Jesus. Do whatever he tells you. By following Mary's example, leaving our burdens and our prayers with Christ, this is how we too can become a people who are pilgrims, a pilgrim people of God's promise. And this is where the rosary can be transformative for our lives. It's such a powerful, beautiful prayer. It's why I take a rosary with me everywhere. One always hangs by the side of my bed. If I wake up in the middle of the night, which happens more as I get older, I can be restless or I can be anxious. And so I turn to the rosary that brings me through Mary to the Lord Jesus. The power of the rosary and praying with and to Mary is that she points us to look to the mysteries of her son, our Saviour. She draws us into his life more deeply. As the beads move through our fingers, we pray with Mary and she leads us to Christ. As Mary shows us the way to Christ, we can let ourselves be at peace and we too can do whatever he tells us. The rosary is a remembrance of God's promise. We can hold it in our hand. A virgin will conceive, God promised, and give birth to a son who is forever Emmanuel, God with us. This is what the rosary proclaims. God is with us in our joys and in our sorrows. God is with us in our successes and our failures. God is with us in times of darkness and light. God is with us through life and death and into eternal glory. So my friends, this May, the month of Mary, make it a time when you journey with Mary on your way to Christ. Surrender and make, do whatever he tells you, a part of your life. Pray the rosary. And may Mary, our Blessed Mother, the star of the new evangelization, teach us to love the Lord Jesus as she loves him, so that others too might know his love. May God bless you and keep you.